Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have made a whole bunch of new coastal farmhouse patriotic DIYs for the 4th of July or summer decorations in your home and I can't wait to show you how I put them all together. I made so many I lost count. So the first one we're going to make is an American flag and I want to do my own little coastal touch on it. So we're going to use some of these little hanging shelves from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use three of them. They have that like great like natural wood finish and I think they're going to be perfect. They have the little rope hangers on there and we're not going to use those for their intended functions but we're definitely going to save those. So they're already tied on so the first step is just to simply cut them off. I just cut the knots off the bottom and pull them off. I love these. They come in a couple different sizes. Um, this is the size that I just recently found there. And I'm going to put three of them together to make a rectangular shape for an American flag for our wall. Now, if you can't find them, you can also use some of these crafter square wood ones. They have them in two different sizes. You can kind of use whatever you have. And let's get started making this look like a flag. So the first thing we're gonna do is paint it. I'm just gonna use painter's tape and just kind of eyeball about halfway down. Um, a big stripe for that one. Also for this one, that's gonna have the little, you know, um, square that has the star. So I didn't go all the way on that one and the bottom one as well. What I want to do is um, make a little square section here um, for the stars. But my take on this, instead of red and white stripes on the flag, I want to do like an aqua and wood stripe just to kind of give it my own feel. So we have that all taped off and we can start mixing. I'm just using acrylic paint. Um, I'm using the color turquoise and white mixed together to give me a nice like minty blue. Today we're gonna to be using lots of blues because I think all the different shades of blue really reminds me of the ocean. And so this is so easy to paint. I'm simply gonna paint on the top stripe of all of those um, little places that I have marked off and leave the other stripe wood. So easy peasy. Guys, I'm so excited. I just hit 7,000 subscribers as I am filming this. And so to celebrate, we're gonna have another giveaway. So stick around later in the video to find out how to enter. Yay! Okay, so that is dry and I'm just gonna peel off my painter's tape. Now, a lot of times I do like an aqua and a red. Um, this one I'm gonna do a flag that's like blue and blue because I really wanna do like all those shades of blue for the ocean. So the little square part of the flag that's gonna have the stars, I'm gonna do that in a different shade of blue. So again, I'm just using acrylic paint. This was the color Caribbean blue and I mixed in white to give me a light shade of blue but I kind of wanted it to be a little bluer. So I'm just gonna mix in, I think this is like a royal blue, just to kind of give me a different tone of blue. So it'll contrast against um, the aqua color that we used before. But it was a little dark, so I'm just lightening it again. And remember, you don't have to have every shade of paint because you can mix about whatever you want. And then I'm simply gonna paint the top part of that line and this section of this side, that color of blue. And I think that looks really pretty with the blue and the blue. I like to do my own little versions of the flag. So we have that part painted off. So just gonna remove the painter's tape. And we have our three pieces of our little flag sign. Now I'm going to use that existing rope that had the hanger for the hangers for the shelves and I'm going to actually use it to tie the wood signs together. 
I could have always glued them together and you totally could, but I thought this would be a fun way to hang it. So I put it in one, tie it in the front, and then before I tie the second one, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side so I can kind of get in there first. It does take a little patience to try to get this rope back through those holes, but I didn't wanna use anything skinnier because I don't want it to fall through once I tie it. And then tie those both and just cut off the excess rope. And it's a great way to um, deal with those holes in there and it gives another little coastal touch to our project. So again, we're gonna do that up here. And kind of my theme for today is gonna be starfish and stripes instead of stars and stripes. And so when we go to put the stars on our little flag there, we're gonna use a starfish, of course. <laughs> so just tying it, feeding it through, and tying it off again. We have all that rope, we might as well use it, right? And then I am gonna go in and it's a double hanger, so I'm gonna go ahead and untie that and just, I only want one hanger. I like the little um, metal hook at the top, but I only needed one strand for the hanger. And I'm gonna go in from the back. I find it hangs better on my wall like that. And then we'll have little matching knots to kind of go with all the other knots there on our flag. Just trying to um, center that. And here is our stars. I always just ordered these on Amazon. I'll post a link below. They are some white starfish that I got and they're the perfect size for this DIY. They're not real starfish, but they're really pretty and they're really easy to craft with. Now, if you wanna use the one from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree, you could just have one big star on there for the starfish. Um, and that would totally look cute too. But I just ordered these in and I thought they'd be perfect. So I'm just gonna attach them all with a little dot of hot glue. I had enough room for three rows of three, so our little star, of our flag is gonna only have nine stars, but that's totally fine. I had so much fun putting these projects together over the Memorial Day weekend. Once I started, deconstructing my spring entryway, I was like, oh, we have to go full on coastal patriotic here. Now, I didn't like the fact that that bottom hole didn't have anything in it. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use a little piece of twine, tie it off and then tie it off on the back just so it's uniform and that all the holes are covered with knots. And this is how it looks hanging in my entryway. I think it's so coastal and so sweet and totally my vibe for my house. Okay, our next project. This is a great piece of driftwood that I found at the beach the other day. I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit. Y'all, I washed this and dried it and washed it and dried it and shook it and washed it and dried it and like it's still got sand in it. <laughs> but it is what it is. Now, if you don't live near the beach and you can't find an awesome piece of driftwood, you could do this with any old piece of wood, like a little, like a log, um, you know, something from a tree. You can use firewood, whatever. Now, it doesn't have a very flat base, so I'm just gonna use a spare piece of wood I had laying around from a craft project and paint that blue because you're probably gonna be able to see it. And we're gonna make a little base for our driftwood and I'm just gonna glue that down with some hot glue. And we are gonna turn this driftwood into a sailboat. I've always wanted to do this, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to do a sailboat for my entryway and do it all coastal patriotic. So fun. So once I have it down, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a fairly large hole all um, about halfway through my driftwood so that I can put, I don't know my sailing terminology, <laughs> um, the pole that goes up the middle of the sailboat. Why can't I think of that? Is it the mast? Maybe. And then I'm gonna use, these are the little hot dog sticks from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut that down to size trying to cut, make it the straight part of it because they do get a little bit warped, but you can use whatever you have. And I just glued that on and put that down into the hole. 
now we're making sales. Now this is a bandana from the Dollar Tree and I wanna use the red and white stripe part of it to, you, to make one side of the sailboat look like stripes. So I'm just using my fabric scissors and trying to cut as straight as possible. Now there is a finished edge and um, I was gonna have a finished edge on two sides but then I thought that would look a little weird so I decided I would only have the finished edge on the bottom. That way it would look a little bit better. So I'm just trying to cut as straight as I can to avoid any fraying with my fabric scissors. And I kind of measured my pole about how tall that I'm gonna need my sail to be. And then I'm just gonna use my ruler here and an ink pen and kind of draw on where I wanna cut my sail and try my best to cut a straight line there out of the bandana. The bandana was pretty easy to work with to make a sail for this project. And there we go. Now for the other side of the sailboat, I thought I would use some of the shore living fabric from the Dollar Tree. This is the starfish fabric and I thought it'd be perfect. Stars and stripes, starfish and stripes. And so we're gonna use this for the other sail. This is a much heavier duty fabric than the um, bandana, but it's also wrinkly. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kinda lay that out um, the bottom portion was very wrinkly, so I'm gonna kinda cut that apart in half, and then I'm gonna kinda cut off that wrinkly bunch here at the bottom. By drawing a straight line first, it's definitely gonna help me cut a straight line. And then we will try to figure out, measure how big I want this by measuring my driftwood, and then I'm gonna use my ruler and an ink pen just to kind of draw that out where I need to cut my other sail. And again, just trying to cut straight, trying to avoid any fraying if I can. I'm gonna leave the edges unfinished. I think that'll be fine, but they were just too wrinkly for me. So I'm gonna give them a quick press, especially this one, um, to try to get out some of those wrinkles on our sails. <laughs> And this is so fun to put together. Now this is some of that brown and white like Baker's Twine um, from the Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter what you use, whatever you've got. I tried to use a big needle and I couldn't get it through with that. It was just too big and bulky. So I used the needle to poke a hole in the fabric and then string it through. Still kind of super tricky to do. Now it was easier to do on this fabric definitely than it was on the bandana because the bandana is really thin. I'm even using like my Cricut weeder to try to make the hole a little bit bigger so that um, threading it through was kind of the difficult part, but I was trying to thread it through so I could tie a knot on the back and I was able, I was successful on most of these. <laughs> but definitely tricky. Now the bandana, I definitely struggled with that technique. I tried using like my Cricut leader to put a big hole in there, but it was so close to the edge and it was um, just hard. I got it here on the first one and I tie it off, but on these other two corners, I was not so successful. <laughs> now, if you had like the little hooks uh, or like the little rings with the little um, eyelet screws. Do you know what I'm talking about? I've had some sailboats that I've bought made like that where you could screw this the one um, circle into the wood and then put the other little eyelet through the fabric. That would work really well if you have that. But since I couldn't get it to work on these two corners, what it ended up doing was just using the twine to tie a knot around the corner of the fabric and cutting off any excess fabric and it worked. Now it's time to put our sailboat together. Um, the easiest part of this was attaching it to the center pole um, because all I have to do is just simply tie that on with the twine that I have. So I'm gonna start by doing the red and white, tying the bottom and the top here. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the other side. We'll worry about the other side last because um, I have to find something to attach it to. So on this one, I'm gonna tie it to the bottom right where I tied the other sail. Then I used the two twines together and tied them together. 
Then I'm going to do the same exact thing at the top by tying that onto the pole and then tying it together with the other sail and just cutting off the excess twine. So we're all attached in the center. Now we just need to find a way to attach it to the 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 bottom. I thought I would just wrap it around and use some hot glue to attach it to the back of the driftwood. That way you won't be able to see it. And that totally worked. Just trying to stretch out my sails until they're taut. And I love this DIY. This sailboat was so much fun to make. I really encourage you to make one. And you know what? I could totally use this for other se um, seasons by just changing out the sails. The starfish would kind of go with anything. And you know the stripes are kind of nautical too. So it might work year round. Now I wanted to make a flag for the top and so I'm going to use some more shore living fabric um, just because I kind of wanted to match the blue, the colors, and I wanted kind of a starfish on the little flag that I'm going to make for the top of our sailboat. So I'm just going to cut out a little piece of that shore living fabric and we're going to start working on a little flag. Now it was kind of see-through the fabric so I decided to double that up and it would kind of make it stronger so the flag would stay straight out. So I'm cutting two pieces for the flag there. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of Mod Podge just to glue those together to give me a thicker fabric for the flag. And you could use whatever you um, have felt would work really good for this. That would be really easy. And I'm just going to kind of wrap it around the pole, just cutting off any excess fabric so it doesn't peek out. And attaching that with hot glue by wrapping that around. And we have a cute little flag for the top of it. And I'm just going to attach that to the post with some more hot glue. And there it is. We have our Coastal Patriotic Driftwood Sailboat. And I just love how this turned out. This is how it looks in my entryway. I love it. What do you think? Okay, our next DIY, I found this great bucket at the Target dollar spot for $3. It's the perfect shade of blue. It's got this real thick, chunky rope handle that looks so coastal. And I thought we could do something fun with it. So the first thing I did was put a metal bucket in there just to kind of take up some space. And then I'm using some trash bags to fill that up as filler because I had just recycled and I had nothing to put in there. <laughs> just to kind of fill it up. Now I do go back and replace that little metal bucket with a um, little round piece of foam because I found that it worked better. Now to decorate my bucket, I got one of these USA flags from the Dollar Tree. It is a fabric patch and you can use whatever you have, but I'm just gonna use that. I thought that'd be a fun texture and attach it to the front of our bucket with some hot glue and the American flag and the contrast against that great aqua color. I think that looks really good together. Now I don't want like the bag to be visible. So I'm just gonna use some bleached out white shells from the Dollar Tree to kind of cover the bag. What I want this to be is like a sand bucket full of starfish, the stars for the 4th of July. But I didn't want that bag to show through because, you know, you can see through the starfish. And these are the starfish from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to load it up with starfish. Now I thought it needed something else. So I'm gonna use a plunger handle from the Dollar Tree. I got this for 50 cents because it didn't have the plunger end on it, which was perfect, right? And I'm gonna stain it with some Antique Wax by Waverly and just kind of give it a nice light stain. To get it a little lighter, I use a wet wipe to wipe that in to kind of um, tone down the stain a little bit. I don't want it too dark. And I want to use this plunger handle to make some like wooden um, bottle rockets to stick out of the top of our little summer basket. Now I'm going to use some skewers as well. I'm going to do three of them and stain that with the Antique Wax by Waverly as well and wipe off the excess. I found that those sealed skewers were a little more sealed. They didn't take the stain quite as well. So I did have to... Um, use that Antique Wax by Waverly a couple times to get them a little bit darker color. And I wish I would have stained um, 
the post on my sailboat. I don't know why I didn't. I think I didn't even think about it. Now it is time to start cutting these up. I'm using my saw and I'm just gonna cut three pieces about the same size, cutting the end off the top piece as well so it will be flat. And I'm um, just sanding any sharp edges left on there. And I thought these would be the perfect tops for our bottle rockets. Now I'm just gonna use those to attach to the skewers like that so it'll look like a bottle rocket. And I'm just gonna simply attach those with a little bit of hot glue. And I was trying to decide if I wanted the bottle rockets to be flat on top or if I wanted them to have like a rocket top because you know, most bottle rockets that I have have a flat top like this. I do end up making them have a rocket top though. I just thought it looked a little bit more 4th of July. So just gluing those all on. And y'all, I'm so excited about the 7K contest. I'm so excited that we hit it. Um, I'm gonna do a drawing again. This time I'm giving away the Shore Living Glass stickers. I have a complete set. They're so easy for DIY and you're gonna love them. So stick around on this video to find out how to enter. Um, I'm gonna do, let's see, it's Tuesday. I'll do the drawing on Thursday. So get your entries in before Wednesday night. Now for the little uh, wicks of our bottle rockets, I'm just using twine. I cut off three pieces about the same size and I'm simply gonna hot glue those onto the bottom part of our bottle rocket. So they'll kind of stick out. These turned out so cute. They're such a fun little coastal touch to our 4th of July decorations. Now to make the little tops, I decided to use um, some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. This is the one with the wire rim. I end up not using any of the wire rim, just kind of cutting it a little thinner and then kind of turning it into a pointed top and attaching it to itself with a little bit of hot glue and then going back and trimming to try to make it like a circle around the bottom, circular shape that is. And then just attaching with a very thin bead of hot glue all the way around. It's gonna give us a nice coastal top to our bottle rockets. So I'm just gonna repeat that process for the other two. Making sure um, not to burn myself with that mesh. And for number three. Now I thought about just leaving the bottle rockets wood like this, kind of all natural. I do decide that I want them to have a little bit more 4th of July spirit. And so I do decide to decorate them. I cut the one um, in the middle shortest so that that could kind of sit in the middle. That was before I replaced the bottom with foam. I definitely recommend putting foam in the bottom instead of the metal bucket. It totally made these stand up better but I'm just using a red paint pen and doing some flag stripes on this. So it will be red and wood striped on this bottle rocket. Super easy. Now on this one, I thought I would do stars. I kind of start out with my, um, my fine tip white paint pen and do like a um, outline of a star, which is easier said than done. I started out, I was doing pretty good. And then I was like, you know, I'm gonna fill these in anyway. So I might as well just start making like a regular star like you would make a star. That's so much easier. So then I'm gonna go back with another, um, a thicker white paint pen and just fill in those stars. So this one's gonna be wood with white stars. And it's okay if some of the paint kind of um, melts into the stain, it's gonna make it look a little bit more rustic. I'm not really gonna distress anything today. I really kind of wanted all of my colors to be bold and bright. And so if it kind of looks naturally distressed like that, that's fine. And then this one, I'm gonna do red stripes as well. So again, just drawing stripes, just trying to eyeball them to make them even. And then we're gonna have these stick out of the top of our bucket full of starfish. I thought that'd be another little fun, 4th of July touch for this bucket. And again, I definitely found that they stood up better when I put a foam 
circle in the bottom so I'd have something to stab them into instead of just kind of off to the side like that so that I do go back. I don't show you, but I do go back and replace that. And let me show you how this looks in my coastal decorations. This is our bucket full of starfish. I think it looks like so much fun. I love that bucket from the Target dollar spot. This is also from the Target Dollar Spot. This was $5. I got it there the other day. It is a map of the United States tray. It's a beautiful color of wood, but I thought we could totally take this up a notch. And so the first thing I'm going to do is use this aqua color paint pen and kind of go all around the edges. It's a little bit of a raised lip all the way around the edges of the tray. And I wanted to do another shade of blue for our ocean blue colors today. I'll post a link below to these paint pens. Um, if you want to grab a package, uh, there are uh, lots of fun colors. I got those on Amazon. And this is what we're gonna cover it with, driftwood. So this is the driftwood from Target. It's back in their home decor section by their plants and stuff. It's called Driftwood Vase Filler. It's normally $10, it does go on sale. It was just on sale at my Target like last week. So definitely look for sales on it. You can get driftwood on Amazon, but you don't get very much. And this is very easy to craft wood. As you can see, I am just like kind of putting it together like a puzzle and gluing it down. Since the background is the same color as the driftwood, this was so easy because you can't see any space below it. I didn't have to do anything to prepare the surface. Towards the end, I might have to trim a piece here and there, but this worked so easy. It only took me about 10 minutes to put this driftwood DIY together, and that is really fast for a driftwood project. And the color is very light on these driftwood filler but I think it's definitely gonna work with our coastal vibe for today. And I thought this was such a fun way to decorate this little map of the United States with driftwood. Now, if you can't find the tray, you could uh, try printing out a shape of the United States and um, cutting it out of like a foam board or something like that. There are other options, but this was just so easy. Now I have a leftover like sawtooth hanger from those canvases from the Shore Living Line, and I'm just gonna nail that onto the back. And that DIY is complete. We have our driftwood map of the United States and I have it hanging in a display here at my front door. I think it looks so cute, so coastal. Okay, check out this cool cosmetic bag that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's the perfect color and it says, oh my stars. And I thought that'd make a fun little sign. So I'm gonna use one of these little bamboo cutting boards also from the Dollar Tree. And um, I'm gonna try to attach this to the front of that. So I'm just cutting out the front of the cosmetic bag. It's made out of like a, a leather type material. Super easy to cut this out. And then I thought that the cutting board would make a nice sign. I need to kind of get this cut even though. So that was my challenge because I wanted to kind of attach that to the front of that bamboo. So I need it to kind of look like a frame, be kind of even, right? So I'm gonna use my ruler because Lord knows I can't cut straight lines and draw on some straight sides. And then I kind of need it to be way thinner so that there's more wood exposed on the top and bottom. So again, just using my ruler, and this is the square from the Dollar Tree, and also trying to make it square. And that worked really well. Now I thought it'd be fun to attach it with leather, since it's leather, with some tacks. So I'm just using some thumbnails. Um, doesn't matter what you have, you can attach it with hot glue if you need to. And I am just hammering those in to the corners. I find that the bamboo is really hard, so it did bend some of them. So I did have to um, do several attempts on a couple. This one I couldn't quite get in there even, but the third time's the charm. <laughs> I put this one in and it went straight in. Now I thought an oh my star sign needed stars, right? That kind of goes with it. So I'm gonna use some of these laser cut stars from the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree and just pick out some of the star shapes. 
I think I end up using like three different styles of stars and just kind of scattering those around the sign, kind of where they'll fit. I thought that would be a cute little touch to go with the little Oh My Stars sign. I love that expression, Oh My Stars. It's perfect for 4th of July. And I am gonna paint these um, Caribbean blue just because the uh, leather is kind of aqua. That way we're gonna mix our different shades of blue again. So many different shades of blue today in these coastal patriotic decorations. I love it. I love how it all came together. So I just did one coat of paint on all of those, super easy. And then I'm gonna try to scatter those about on our sign. And then I'm just simply gonna go in there with my hot glue gun and glue all these little stars down. I had less room on the top and bottom, so I'm only doing one star there. And, but I have plenty of room on the side, so two stars on each side. Now, once I got all of my little stars on here, I was thinking it's still a little plain. I think it needs a little bit more of a coastal touch. So I decided to make a frame for our sign. So I thought the quickest, easiest way would to be to make a rope border. So I'm going to use some of this. This is that thinner white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and make a simple rope frame. And it can double as the hanger for the sign too. So two birds, one stone. Just going to attach that along the, starting on the bottom with a bead of hot glue around my little bamboo cutting boards. I love these cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. When I get to the top, I'm gonna leave a loop because I have a plan to kind of make a hanger there at the top and I'm gonna need excess rope there. Kind of centering where I put that so I don't make it hang crooked, right? And then I'm gonna keep gluing that rope along the edges of the sign. Till we get to our corner here, I just cut it off and whenever I try to um, meld the different two ropes together, I just use a little bit of hot glue to kind of make it look at, like it goes around the corner there. And it kind of controls the fraying of the rope as well. Then I'm gonna twist this to make a cute little hoop hanger here at the top and then attach that down with hot glue and to itself. And we have a cute little hanger for our Oh My Star sign. This was so simple. I love this bag. Totally pick it up if you can find it. And it says Oh My Stars and it's a great little sign for my 4th of July decorations. Our next DIY is gonna use some of these bamboo turners from the kitchen section at the Dollar Tree. I thought I can make these look like oars. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is to work on, I want like little handles for the oars. And so I cut them down a little bit so that if I use a popsicle stick at the end, it's gonna cover the little hole in the end of our wood spatula. So then I'm just gonna simply use scissors and cut down the little popsicle sticks into little handles for each one of our little oars. Using my sanding block to try to get that as even as I can, you have to be really careful cutting the popsicle sticks because they definitely split, but it's okay if they do. You can just grab another popsicle stick. Now, I decided they were too long, so I decided to go in and shorten them once I was done with them, of course. So I'm using the existing ones that I have first used and then just making them shorter and then sanding them to make them look smooth. And I thought that would be the perfect little handle for our oars. It's not perfectly shaped like an oar, but it's pretty close. I think we're definitely gonna be able to get away with it. And to make a cute little custom patriotic oars for our wall display. So this is gonna be a hanging sign. Now I wanted to bring in some stars and stripes. So I'm using my red paint pen and I'm gonna just do a couple stripes on the handle. That looks very like something that would definitely be on an oar and it goes with our stars and stripes theme. And since you're gonna be able to see them from the sides, I'm also going in and painting the sides and I'm gonna make both of the oars the same. So just kind of lining them up next to each other so I'll know exactly where to paint my little red stripes. 
I hope you're enjoying these DIYs today. If you are, please take a moment to hit like on YouTube. That definitely helps the algorithm. And when you're done watching, if you could comment your favorite project below, I would totally appreciate it. And don't forget we have a contest today because I hit 7,000 subscribers. So you'll have to comment for that as well. So stick around to find out how. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. You need to be subscribed to enter the contest. Now I'm just using an aqua paint pen to paint the handle. And I used a white paint pen just to do some simple stars. So easy. Now I just need to find a way to attach the two oars together. And I'm just gonna use some twine to tie them. So I kind of crisscross them like that and tie them with some twine from the Dollar Tree and flip that over and tie it again. Now they kind of wanted to go right next to each other and I want them to be like split out because I'm gonna kind of put this above my flag hanger and I kind of want them to kind of nestle together a little bit. So I use a little bit of hot glue on the back there to make it stay open like that because it wanted to close. Then once that's dry, I just take that twine and wrap it around my oars and then tie it on the back. I'm gonna use that excess twine to make a super simple hanger just by tying a knot in that. And so we'll have a hanger for our little patriotic oars. Aren't these cute? They were so easy. I love how they turned out. And this is how they look hanging on my wall. My wall looks so cute. It's so 4th of July, it's so coastal. Okay, you got a sneak peek of this. This is the anchor that we're gonna do for the wall. I'm gonna use two of them. These are the wood anchors from the Shore Living Light at the Dollar Tree. And the reason I'm using two is because I don't want it to be a thin Dollar Tree sign. I want it to be substantial, so I have a plan to make it look like a bigger piece. And I'm just using painter's tape and marking off lines because I want to do stripes on this. I needed a touch of red for my wall. That red really looks good against all of those ocean blues. And so we're going to do red stripes on this. The natural color of the wood is so light that I don't even need to paint it white. I think it looks great. And so I'm going to do a red and wood stripe on this anchor. This is just acrylic paint. It's candy apple red. You can use whatever you have. This like raw wood from the Dollar Tree just soaks that paint up. It's so easy to paint. One coat is definitely enough. And so I simply paint that. The, it took longer to tape it than it did to paint it. So just pulling off all my painter's tape to reveal those beautiful stripes on our anchor. And this is great, a great coastal nautical DIY. Now for the other piece, this is kind of kind of be the background or right? So I am using, this is the turquoise color of acrylic paint, another shade of blue to bring into our blue display. And I'm gonna kind of set this up where you can kind of see the blue behind the red and white stripe and kind of make it like a 3D anchor like that to make it look like a bigger, more substantial piece. But I need it to stick away from it. So I'm using some of these little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree from the Crafter Square. And I'm gonna hot glue three of those down the ore. And that's gonna bump that ore out and give me a great place to attach these, or, um, these ores, these aren't ores, anchors together. And then a dot of hot glue on each one of those little wood cubes and I can lay on my top anchor. This worked so well to make it a bigger piece and I love the blue peeking out from behind. Now I wanted to use some of that white rope from the Dollar Tree. This is that same thinner rope and you know, wrap it around the anchor. I don't want it on the very back though. So I thought I could wrap it around but wrap it through it since I have kind of an open um, anchor. So I'm just gonna hot glue that to that wood block there on the top and then start wrapping it around going through the two anchors so that it still is gonna hang like flat against my wall without all of the weight of the rope being back there. I kind of forgot right there and kind of wrapped it around, but then I remembered, wait a minute, I need to go through and perfect. I just do a dot of hot glue just so that kind of stays in place. 
but just a loose rope to go around our anchor and I think this turned out so cute. I just used a hole in the top for the hanger and this is how it looks hanging on my wall display. Okay, you ready for another one? I told you I made a lot of Coastal Patriotic DIYs. This is one of those wood starfish from the Shore Living line at the Dollar Tree. And if you had the one with paper on it, you could do the same thing probably with it. And I found um, another shade of blue. This is kind of more like that shade we used on the flag where I mixed the royal blue in with the Caribbean blue and the white to give me another fun shade of blue for our wall. And I'm just gonna go all over. This had like a line pattern on it and it said C on it with a starfish. So I like the line pattern. I think the stripes kind of look very um, 4th of July, but I want it to be a very thin, like between board kind of line. So I'm simply using a blue ink pen to kind of trace those on. And that was pretty easy to do. Then since that worked so well, I'm also gonna use my ink pen to outline the little starfish on there, complete with the lines here in the middle. And also the word C, I'm gonna go around the outline of that as well. Now this looks pretty cool. You could totally um, leave it just like this if you'd like. Um, it's a very fine detailed touch, but I really wanted the word C to be like white. And so I'm gonna go in and paint that and the little starfish with just my Sharpie white paint pen kind of leaving the ink pen as a border, and sometimes it kind of peeks out from behind the paint. I just really like um, white paint on blues for coastal decor. I think it looks really cute. Now I thought about turning this around and using the blank side, and that way I could have it say whatever I wanted or nothing at all, but I kind of wanted my seahorse face this direction, so I decided to go with the existing pattern. So just touching that up until I'm happy with it. You can always go back in there with your ink pen and touch up any of the outlines if they need it. So easy. And then I want to make a sign for the seahorse. So I'm gonna use another set of these um, hanging shelves from the Dollar Tree. I think I went through all of these. I'm gonna have to get more when I see them again because I love them. They're so easy to work with. So again, I'm just cutting off all of the ropes and I'm gonna glue the two signs together. This time I'm not gonna tie them together. And this is gonna be a vertical sign as opposed to the flag where I had them um, horizontal. So I just used some hot glue to simply glue that together. It's the perfect size for this little seahorse and I just attached that down with some hot glue onto our sign. Now I thought it was blue, we need to decorate it with stars, right? White stars. So I'm gonna use some more of those stars that I just got on Amazon. And I'm gonna glue those all over, just kind of in a random pattern to make it look very flag-like. Very starfish, very patriotic. I love another shade of blue for our wall. So quick and so easy. I love how this turned out. Now I'm gonna use that existing rope from the hanger and I'm gonna make it way shorter and make just a very simple rope hanger tying um, the twine on the front. Now, since that filled in the holes there, just cleaning that up with a little fire because it was a little raggedy. Um, I don't really like the holes in the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of do the same thing I did on the flag where I'm just gonna tie it in the front. This one, I'm just gonna wrap it to the other side and put it through. And that's just gonna cover up those holes. You could totally leave them. It's totally up to you. And there it is, our little patriotic seahorse for our wall. I think he turned out so cute. Okay, tear tray time. I found this adorable little seagrass tear tray at the Target dollar spot the other day. I shared it with you all because I loved it so much. It was only $5 and I thought it would be perfect for my little coastal 4th of July entryway area. It's not very big though, so it's not gonna take very much to decorate it. I thought one of the shore living fish in the blue and white stripes would be perfect. I don't even have to paint it. 
It's got the right colors that we're using today. It's a fish, so it's coastal. And it fits perfectly up on the top of our little tear tray. So I'm just gonna simply cut the hanger off and sit it on there. Easy peasy, right? Now these are tear tray starter packs from the Target Dollar Spot. $3 gets you three of these cute little chunky houses. And this is the one that we are gonna use. It's got like white stripes and it's got the wood and it's got stars all over. Now I'm gonna cover the stars with some starfish. I just got these on Amazon as well. I went to order some more of the little tiny white ones that I use all the time and I noticed they also had them in blue and I'm like, well I need blue ones. They come in a variety of sizes. So I'm going through and trying to pick out, um, let's see, seven, <laughs> all about the same size as the little stars that I'm covering. And then I'm just gonna simply go in there with a dot of hot glue on all of those and glue those down. The rest of the colors are perfect on this little house. Um, I love these tear tray starter packs from the Target Dollar Spot. They are perfect for tear trays. And I got all of them. There was three different kinds. And so that I can use them for all of my 4th of July tear trays this year. This is definitely the easiest tear tray that I've ever done, <laughs> just because it was small. So I'm gonna use this little house on the bottom of our tear tray, just like that. Now we're gonna make a little four sign to go on there as well. I got this little wood four at the Target Dollar Spot for a dollar. It is wood, we are gonna paint it. And then um, I also got a little chunky sign from the Dollar Tree. It says this on it. It's wood, it's got like a little um, bump out sign. And so I just need to cover that to kind of give me a blank background. And I find the easiest way to do that is to use some of this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. This is the whiteboard wood and I just cut it to size peel and stick. And if you don't get it on there just right, it's very forgiving. But that black writing was strong. You could even see it through the wallpaper. And I wanted to distress it and soften it anyway. So I'm just gonna distress it with some ivory acrylic just to soften it, to cover up any writing that you could see through. And we have a perfect background for our four sign. I thought a four sign would be perfect. And to make it look distressed, I'm just using a red paint pen and doing a sloppy paint job in one direction, leaving some of the wood exposed to give it a little slight distress on this project. And basically that's all it's gonna be, is just a sign that says four. That's perfect for the 4th of July, right? So I'm gonna give that a quick dry. It's super easy to do. The paint pens dry so quick and attach with a little bead of hot glue. And that was our last tear tray DIY, so easy. I'm gonna set that towards the back where it will peek out on one side of the house. The fish on top, but I still had a lot of um, seagrass that wasn't covered, so I'm just gonna use some Dollar Tree seashells and try to pick out some interesting ones and fill up both tiers with seashells until it's perfect. I'm gonna top it with just a little tiny American flag I had left over from last year. And this is how it looks in my entryway, right next to my front door. It's so cute and so simple. Okay, I had one spot on my wall that needed something. So this is another tear tray starter kit from the Target Dollar Spot, and I'm just gonna use the white star, and I just attached it to my wall with some double stick tape because I just needed one more thing, and that was the perfect thing. Now this is some seagrass that I got at Target, normally $5, they had these on sale for $3.50 this week. Great deal for some seagrass but I wanted to look a little bit patriotic. So I'm gonna use some of this a ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It's like a burlap with red, white, and blue stars all over. And I'm just gonna simply wrap that plain white pot from Target with some patriotic ribbon. Couldn't be any easier. It's gonna kind of um, not be even on the back, but that's okay, because you won't be able to see it and just gluing that down. And I'm gonna kind of tuck that behind our sailboat. And that was our last DIY today. I really hope you enjoyed them, but first it's contest time. Would you like to win a complete set of these Shore Living glass stickers? You can use them on anything. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to my channel, 
like this video and then comment 7K below. I will do the drawing on Thursday. So get your entry in by Wednesday at midnight Eastern time. Good luck. And did you know that YouTube has a new feature under each one of my videos? There is a super thanks button now, and it's a way for you to show your support for my channel. And I wanted to thank my viewer, Mary, for sending me a $5 super thanks. I'm so thankful for you. That really helps support my channel. I'm a small channel and it really helps. Um, if you would like to do it, you can um, donate as little as $2. It's completely up to you and I would totally appreciate it. Thank you, Mary. And now are you ready for the final reveal? Here we go. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Enjoy. I'm buzzing, let's drink up. You deaf look like big fun. Come on, let's get it on. Like that one fin gay song. I'm stunning, you love it. Come on, give me something. I know that you want it. Come on, give me something. The night is young and so I'm so